So did how did Slice of Life come together? What had happened was that um, Pete Wilson, who's the, who's the acoustic guitar player, and Carol Hodge, who's the pianist now, she was doing vocals for me on the Last Supper tour, and Pete was playing bass. And we were coming back from uh, Australia, no, New Zealand, and we got caught up in some uh, volcanic storm or something, so we had to spend the night in Sydney. So they put us up in this four-star hotel, amazing four-star hotel. So, of course, we were sitting there nicking the beers and all this, and this song came over the, the um, set of speaker, um, and I said to Pete and Carol, you know, I'd love to do something like this, something acoustic, you know, and, and I've been thinking about it for years, and I have, you know, I've been thinking about it for 20 years or something. And, uh, and I said, would you be interested in working with me? And they went, yeah, we'd love to. So we started off with the three of us. We just did, we did a one-off gig in Holland before the Shepherd's Bush gig, and then about a year after, after Australia had finished, so the following summer, we, um, the three of us again just did another one-off thing, which was a, they got a new lifeboat for the crew that Steve volunteers for in St Pauling, so we played that as an opener, as a sort yeah. of fundraiser so was, type yeah, thing. The three of us um, in the in the snug of his local pub, he didn't no even stage. have a PA. Like he basically, Steve sang through my keyboard amp, and uh, I just used the inbuilt speakers on my piano. And you had a little practice amp, didn't you? And uh, there was about 30 people there, and like nobody in Steve's village really knew who he was or what he'd done or anything. So it was literally just a load of locals. And we did like a few craft songs and a few new songs. And uh, the previous gig we'd done before that was like Shepherd's Bush Empire. It's like two and a half thousand people, and we were like there in his local. But Steve was as buzzing after the local gig as he was after Shepherd's Bush Empire. <laughs> it's kind of something up, really, isn't it? Yeah. So you can have what you desire. All you've got to do is sell your soul. So, I've got no reason to believe in a devil. I'm looking for the ultimate goal. Then they tell you there's another solution. Get in line for the next revolution. And if you pay your contribution, you're there. Another institution where you don't get me in the stores of house. You won't have me when you look. I won't be just another number to be in your box. The thing I like about um, with, with Slice um, is that we've stripped it right down again to the bare bones, just very simple, you know, like when Skiffle started or, you know, um, the uh, uh, um, in the sort of little folk clubs and in London, you know, when yeah, it was yeah. just like a bloke on a guitar. And I want to take, really want to take it back to that, um, like the punk thing when it started, it was like if you've got a biscuit tin, you know, that was punk and it was also Skiffle. That was you and Penn to begin with, though, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. absolutely, yeah, and yeah. I didn't realise it at the time because no. I wanted to be, I wanted to sound like the Clash, sure. you know. <laughs> What's been the motivation behind what you're doing? You've been singing and writing lyrics for what, 30, 40 years? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. It, and it's still part of you, still yeah, it's yeah. ongoing. It didn't finish with the last supper then, eh? No. And the funny thing, I don't think it started with Crass. I think uh, I think Crass was the or, or punk when it started. 
I think that was the thing that made me realise, look, I've been reading these books and watching these films, you know, from the 60s, Saturday night, Sunday morning, Taste of Honey, um, Whistle Down Wind, uh, Up the Junction, Kathy Come Home, uh, all the Ken, Ken Loke stuff. Yeah. And I didn't realise until Punk came along, you know, that of course that's what I'm, it's that injustice. It's a wonderful world if you don't buckle under and you don't rub against the grain. And in the fading light, if you're a little bit tight, you can manage to ignore the pain. And life kicks in. And survival begins. Now through the veil of your tears. Screams and die, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. There are still poor people, and people are struggling to live. You know, it might look nice on the surface. Uh, you know, I, I have conversations with a mate of mine, Lev. You know, um, he's from uh, um, Chesterfield, ex miner, uh, and sometimes we talk about it. You know, and the Thatcher years and all this. You know, and he still gets tears in his eyes. You know, uh, and because it smashed their communities. Yeah, I've got to do my question, cause I've seen it. I don't need another lesson. Oh. So what's going on now with Slice then? Well, what we're doing, we're just going where we can, when we can, uh, like this is a matinee uh, for families, so we set up chairs and stuff so people sit down. Um, if I get too depressed, um, then we'll take, I'll take a couple of years off and we'll, we'll do a studio album, but you know, or if we start losing, you know, if I have to, then we'll jack it in. It's literally like that, you know, as long as we enjoy it, we're going for it. Yes, gotcha. Thank you, good night. It was. You've got to keep that I in. I can't top that. Hey, it's like Buster Keaton. <laughs> hey. That's great, man. That'll do it. Nice one to end it on. Lovely. Man.